Hello, everyone. This is Carl Freund again with Cambria AI Research. And another topic you think you will find interesting is those of you who follow my blogs and videos know I've been very interested in what Qualcomm is doing in the data center and specifically with the Cloud AI 100. I'm very fortunate today to have uh, Mike Vildbill. He is the VP and General Manager of the Cloud uh, Business Unit, Cloud AI Business Unit. Welcome, Mike. Hey, I'm glad to be here with you. Thanks, Carl. I uh, appreciate you joining us. Let's uh, get right to it then. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, three years ago, I think, you guys first started talking about Cloud AI 100 design goals and what you expected to achieve. Can you, can you describe for the audience what your vision is for AI and what your vision for, for uh, Qualcomm is outside of, let's say, the mobile, mobile platforms? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And I think the compelling thing to Qualcomm's vision is not just that it's a vision, but it's a vision that that a single company, Qualcomm in this case, can actually actually act upon. Um, we have a very um, deep bench of technologies that really allow us not only to uh, think about uh, the, the future, but actually uh, act on it and deliver products and technologies to get us there. Um, we really view the the future as having a lot to do with distributed intelligence and the ability to make globally informed decisions quickly based on data and information that is nearby. And it's this ability to, um, to combine global awareness or, or access to global knowledge while making very quick, uh, high accuracy, low latency decisions at the edge, for example, is a very compelling um, future as we think about the, the future of intelligence and where does it happen uh, in, the, in the cloud infrastructure, for example. So in doing so, this really makes us more productive. You know, it makes uh, us more safe. It makes us better informed. And it really makes us much better connected in all that we do, both in our personal lives and our business lives. Um, and then when you, you think about this distributed intelligence vision, you know, the fact that, that the role of 5G is actually a, a very significant enabler to this to this vision where 5g is now bringing us the performance and the functionality that really changes the game and allows us to uh, envision uh, this future of truly distributed intelligence that's and, pretty exciting I'm sorry, yeah, oh, thank you no no it, it truly is and and not only is it uh exciting vision but it's all uh quite doable and it's it's within our reach in terms of things that uh, industry can do and is doing today. And so for Qualcomm, I'll finish by saying it's really this, um, th the importance of this end-to-end -end connectivity and allow, this really allows for this notion of distributed intelligence. You can't be entirely intelligent if you're working in a vacuum or if you're too isolated from the rest of the knowledge base but that means that you need to have access to local data, not just data back in the cloud. And it's this edge to edge connectivity from edge to cloud and the role that 5G is increasingly playing in us uh, actually being able to realize this vision. Cool, well, let's, let's double click then on the Cloud AI 100. Talk about the program, talk about what your goals are, which kind of models are you optimizing the first mm -hmm. platform for and what type of customers are you targeting? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so let me start with a brief description. I won't make this a product brief uh, or a, a data sheet presentation, but uh, maybe just for context, a little bit of introduction on the product itself. And so Qualcomm has developed a very high performance uh, AI inferencing engine uh, and that we can package it in multiple form factors, uh, PCIe Express card, uh, dual M.2 form factor are very common uh, form factors that we package this. In fact, I just rummaged through my, uh, my bin and I, I pulled up some um, engineering samples. And so this is in fact the uh, PCI Express card. Uh, this is a 75 watt TDP, uh, up to 400 tops performance in one card. And it's a half height, half length form factor. So it's actually not the big massive PCIe cards that you're used to seeing, and it's only single uh, width. It's not one of these monstrous, you know, 400 watt uh, GPUs that you see in the market. And so we're able to stuff a lot of these into individual data center servers. Uh, and so that's the PCI Express card. But then we also have what we call the dual M.2 form factor. And it comes as small as this, which 
if, if you were to look really closely, you would see two M.2 connectors kind of fused together. And so we call it a dual M.2. It's, it's a double wide M.2, uh, very compact. This can go down to 15 watts up to 25 watt in power um, and can be up to about half of the performance of that PCIe card I just showed you. And then for the data center use, we even have some customers that like that dual M.2 form factor, but they want it in the data center. And so here's the same D dual M.2 with a, a heat sink on the top. And uh, this right here is specifically uh, compliant with the OCP form factor and, and customers can put this into OCP servers into, uh, into the data center. And so you kind of get a feel for what we're talking about physically. Um, these devices are, are perfectly suited for cloud and data center, but all the way down to edge. And that we see these little things, you know, packaged into a, a server or an appliance that's the size of a cigar box. And it might be bolted to the side of a building or put on a light pole or, or put in a roadside unit somewhere. They can be very compact. And even our smaller systems can manage the bandwidth of, of, a, of well over a dozen 20 high definition cameras simultaneously doing AI on high definition uh, signals coming from those cameras real time on each frame, AI frame by frame on a very large number of cameras all coming off of something this small to kind of show you the, the, the performance of this ASIC, it's, it is quite uh, impressive. But it's not just about the hardware. We all love to talk about hardware. I can't really hold software in front of you. I wish I could, um, uh, but there's also a, a lot to be said about software. And so we have a, a, a quite comprehensive software offering. Um, and this really comes from the fact that Qualcomm is in its sixth generation of AI, of, of delivering AI technologies in our mobile processors. Uh, we're not new to the game at all. What is new with AI 100 is taking this this portfolio of hardware and software assets and really uh, customizing it um, for to be a perfect good fit for the edge and cloud uh, AI environment. So in the software, we break our, our software into really two chunks, two SDKs. And so we have an applications SDK, which is the compiler and a simulator and a bunch of tuning tools, including quantification tools and, and all those very powerful, important tools needed to optimize uh, and to validate accuracy uh, of your models. Uh, also, we include in that SDK source code and pre-compiled examples. Then we have a second half of our stack, which is the platform SDK, and it includes the runtime, a bunch of monitors, firmware, and then a bunch of tools that are more for the deployment side, such as debug and profiling, uh, functionality, validation, and stress testing. And the reason we, we broke this up into two, it, we can, a, a customer can run them as one giant thing. They, 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 they seal together really nicely as one software stack. But we do have some customers who, if you're deploying something on a real small uh, device out at the edge, you might not need or want a compiler. You might not need some of that baggage in terms of software. And so we split the SDK so we can deploy a much more compact set of software at the edge where some of these devices are running you know, in, in um, you know, double digit watts. And so, you know, every bit of baggage that you can get off that package is important. Cool. And then, so, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. I keep interrupting you. My no, apologies. no, I'd love to hear a question if you have one. Well, yeah, I think, you know, your ML perf numbers were frankly pretty shockingly good. Uh, not only that, but you were the only one, one of the only startups to actually stand up. I think you are the only, AI startup at a big company that stood up to the rigors of submitting ML perf and your numbers came out fantastic in terms of performance per watt. Uh, but you only submitted results on image processing. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the other kind of workloads that you and your early clients are evaluating for the Cloud AI 100. You know, it's really interesting. It's perhaps not a very popular thing to say, but um, when we talk with customers about performance, you know, the the, the first number that we all end up talking about is tops. What's the theoretical uh, ops per second and trillions? And now we're putting peta ops in, a, in, a, in an enclosure and in a rack. And so we always start with the tops number. What's your tops? And then we all, including the customer, quickly realizes, you know, that really doesn't represent our real world uh, performance experience. 
it's a it's an interesting number for for very uh, rudimentary comparison of products, but it doesn't translate to reality. And so then the next step is benchmarking and ML Perf and the ML Commons um, activity is a is an excellent you know industry forum uh, where we can do more um, more integrated and more meaningful performance and power efficiency benchmarks. And that's really uh, very valuable. But even then the customers will say, you know that those benchmarks don't always really represent the real world. What we really need you to do is to do a POC, a proof of concept with us in our environment, with our applications, with our pipeline to do an end to end uh, proof of concept to demonstrate. And many, if not most of our customers tell us that's the measure. And so when we talk about ML Perf, you know, we did decide this time to submit a few and I'll talk about those results. Thank you, by the way, for your congratulations there. The numbers were quite positive. Um, but it, you know, ML Perf is not our highest priority and that we find ourselves spending a lot of time working with our, our you know, real customers with real applications, uh, optimizing uh, those models and refining our software to deliver real world performance that our customers actually get to benefit from. Um, so I needed to kind of start with this. Well, benchmarking is important, but it's not the it's not the end goal. It's just a, a step along that journey. And nobody pulls out a credit card once they see your ML Perf numbers, that's for sure. But it is a starting point. And it the is. workloads are representative. And they're not the exact yeah. workloads people are using, but they're representative common uh, uh, ML ML workloads in the, in the cloud and edge. Yeah, and we came in knowing that the, uh, the ML Commons um, membership, you know, is comprised of, of a lot of, of heavy hitters and long time incumbents in the, in the AI space and in, including inferencing. And so what we decided to do is, well, you know, it's complex. There's a, a, a whole process in running your benchmarks in a, in a loaded environment, not just a, a standalone a pristine environment, but loaded environments with other activities going on, contention and whatnot. And so we decided, well, let's just go slow. Let's pick a couple. We picked two uh, key benchmarks that we ran through the system and we fully expected we'd do well and, and, and our results show that, that we were right. Um, and that we focused on computer vision just because we had to pick two from somewhere and that just seemed a good place to be. In future ML uh, perf releases, you're, you will see us submitting uh, NLP networks, you're going to see us uh, submitting benchmarks on recommender systems. You know, I, you can take my word for it, but you won't believe it until you see the ML perf submission. You know, but our numbers there are going to be also very good. Um, it is not at all the case that we're a one trick pony in computer vision, but rather we, that's where we decided to kind of start as we're in at the same time working with real world customers on their real world, world applications. We wanted to make sure that we didn't put too much engineering resource uh, just into the benchmarking effort. But you're going to see us uh, come out with future releases with more uh, detail on, on benchmarks that are outside of the computer vision realm. Good, good. We look forward to it. Um, and um, I was wondering maybe just uh, for the audience, the data center audience, if that's perhaps unfamiliar with Qualcomm outside the handset realm. How do you how do you get such incredible power efficiency? I mean, just from a top standpoint, you're you're about ten tops, uh, about excuse me, about um, at ten tops per watt, and and that's that's world class. I, I don't know of anybody that's uh, doing any better. Most are doing less. Uh, same here. I'm I'm not aware of anyone doing better. It's a an, a phenomenal achievement, and. Um, and this really comes down to Qualcomm's heritage in developing very power efficient and very high performant mobile devices. And you see the Snapdragon uh, technologies, for example, not only in mobile phones, but in tablets and in uh, laptops and, and in many other areas in driving infrastructure. And Qualcomm has a, a, a very um, deep bench in, in the ability to engineer uh, incredibly power efficient and incredibly performant um, silicon. And, and indeed that's what you're seeing with the AI 100. We're often asked what's coming next, what comes with the, A, the AI 100 next. You know, and I can simply say that, um, you know, expect a continued focus on delivering uh, industry leading um, performance and performance efficiency uh, in our products. So we, this is something that Qualcomm is very good at 
and we'll continue to be delivering in that area. Excellent. You're also very good at building SOCs. So I uh, look forward to the time we start seeing SOC technologies and architectural approaches being applied, if that ever makes sense for your business. But uh, uh, I'm very, very impressed with your results so far. Can't wait to hear more uh, as you are ready. And also can't wait to hear from some of your clients as they are ready. I know they're always reticent to talk about what they're doing to give them competitive advantage. I wouldn't expect your clients to be any different. Uh, but I look forward to that as well. Any other final comments before we, uh, before we close out here? You know, no, I, I think we covered it. I really appreciate you having me here. Um, you know, I think if I were to have any closing comments, it really comes to your opening question about, you know, vision and where are we going? And as, as Qualcomm looks out to the future and where things are going, you know, me with my insider perspective inside the company, it, it's just an incredible environment here to see that it's not a future that we're talking about. It's a future that we're building here at Qualcomm. And uh, the, the, the technologies and the solutions, the whole end-to-end -end solutions, uh, bringing these things together, not just, being, uh, uh, not just developing chips, but developing solutions um, with the whole end-to-end -end in sight is really an exciting place to be at Qualcomm. And, and we view this time uh, in where we are in this migration of intelligence moving to the edge, processing moving to the edge, it is the perfect time, the perfect place for Qualcomm, a leader in the communications field, uh, a leader in, in performance and power efficiency, which is vitally important, not only at the edge, but increasingly so in the hyperscale or data center as well. It's a perfect blend of, of, uh, of a perfect storm of, of opportunity for Qualcomm, and we're quite excited here uh, working on the future as I speak. Uh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. I'm very excited. We'll see what happens next. As you know, I think the Cameron explosion is going to produce a lot of winners and a lot of detritus that only show up in the fossil record. Um, I, I try not to pick winners and losers, but I think you guys have all the right ingredients to, to be in the top tier for, for edge processing. And so I'll be following you closely. Everyone, Mike Vildebill from uh, Qualcomm uh, with the Cloud AI 100. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Carl.